Go is a programming language designed to be simple and fast. It's been booming in popularity the last couple of years, and it's emerged as a premier way of writing tools and applications. But how is it when it comes to game development? Uh, niche. I would say niche. Go is a garbage collected language, so it's not really most people's first choice for game development. After all, you can't make games with garbage collected languages, we know that. And outside of making something yourself, there really aren't that many options in terms of engines or tools for you to use with Go, at least not mature ones. If only there was a Go developer out of Tokyo, Japan that would create an open source game engine that fostered a pretty niche community that fully supports it today. Oh wait. There is, it's the EBIT engine, or as it says on the official documentation, the AB engine. But I'm gonna call it the EBIT engine, sorry. And this is a 2D game engine that markets itself as being simple, multi-platform, performant, and production ready, which is quite a claim. Such a claim that I wanna check it out myself. Do I have experience with Go? No, but today I'm going to make a game written in Go using the EBIT engine and built for you to play in the browser. After all, it claims it exports to WebAssembly. And by by the end of this, I'm gonna have an idea of what's it like to build a game with Go. And the first question we're gonna have is how do we actually use and get the EBIT engine? Well, first step is installing Go onto your machine, and then in any Go project, we can just reference the GitHub of the EBIT engine directly, and it will import all the code for us. Pretty nice. But now that I have the EBIT engine, it's time to make a game. Except I don't know how to do anything. This happens when I try new things. So it's time to look at the documentation on the website. And hey, hey, check it out, familiar things. We got a draw function, update. We could set the screen size and draw a window. These are things you'll see in like every game making tool. And then before I even start thinking about what kind of game I wanna make, I always try and at least get a player drawing to the screen and moving around using some input. There is some documentation on how to draw things to the screen. So that was the first step of getting the player. Here he is. But then to get him moving, uh, well, the keyboard section says TBD on the website. But I did find another source of documentation and I just started searching for things that might be related to input, like is key pressed. And this proved so useful, not just for moving the player around, but just for looking up anything with the EBIT engine. I had a resource. So it was pretty easy to get the player moving around. And then I added a really small collision detection function and just check to see if I was colliding with this other player object. And if it seems like I'm zooming through all this, it's because I quickly realized I don't wanna make a game like this. I don't mean with the EBIT engine. It was actually really easy to get a lot of this stuff going. I didn't really run into any problems. I just wanna make a different kind of game, a game I never really make. Maybe something with a grid. After all, when you're thinking of fun, you think of spreadsheets. And check it out, I just found out how to draw a rectangle. So we just mash these two things together and a grid, a beautiful, colorful grid. It is a little cramped though, huh? That's better. A beautiful, vibrant grid. Look at all that padding. Quick shout out to the cornflower blue background. And what are we gonna do with this grid? I'm not too sure, but I think I wanna click and drag these around. So that was the next thing I coded up. And working with grids is really annoying, but eventually I got to where you can click and drag the square around and place it and things will happen. It's just that it's really buggy right now. I don't know why I chose grids. I hate grids, but I hate quitting more. So I played around with the grid for a long time and eventually got it so when you're clicking and dragging these squares around and you let go, it checks to see if there's any matches on the board, which getting this working sealed the direction of the game. We're making a match three which I actually haven't made or played games like that, but I know right now I'm able to move these squares anywhere, even if it's not a valid move, and I'm pretty sure it has to like always be a match, which means I had to do even more annoying grid calculations and determine if it was a valid match or not. Now it just rejects your move when it's not. And if it is a valid move, you'll now get a score. So if it's like three matches, you'll get one point, and if it's you know more than that, you'll get an increasing amount. And by now showing your score as you play, it's starting to feel a little bit like a game's coming together. The problem is now you can just kind of do this forever which isn't a lot of fun so i added a limitation of a set amount of moves you can make and now there's at least like a degree of strategy in the game to get a high score with a set amount of moves but i couldn't help but feel like something was missing like what was the goal of doing this just getting a high score isn't that interesting to me and that's when something crazy happened do you see this it's a banana and i was eating that for lunch <laughs> And when thinking of a goal for the game, you know who else I realized likes bananas? Donkey Kong. He loves them. And you know who else I realized loves bananas? The hippo and pig from Donkey Kong 64, okay. who you feed bananas to to open the boss room. They really love bananas. They eat so many. And they make that funny noise while you're feeding them. And that got me thinking, you know what else is a really cute fat animal? A walrus. 
I mean, look at that guy. He's so cute. He's waving, but they don't like bananas. With this, I knew the goal for the game. Bananas, forget it. We got fish. You got fish in boxes, you got fish out of boxes. And then you got a big walrus. And now every time you're making a match, the fish pop out of the boxes and go to the walrus to be eaten. We're gonna fatten this walrus up. So yeah, you're making matches, your score goes up, but that score is actually now contributing to how full the walrus is. And you have to make the walrus full in a set amount of moves. So there's some actual strategy. We got a real game on our hands. Oh, before I forget, I also made the noise for the walrus eating. Smash subscribe if you want to hear the outtakes. They're really gross. And with the core gameplay in place, I then did a round of polish and making it look nice by adding a background, adding it to the game. Then we added some sounds. I found a song on opengameart.org. And then added a game loop so every time you win, it increases like the target goal every time, making it harder. See how far you can get when you play. And I just kept polishing until I got to a point where I was ready to build and try and deploy it on itch.io. This is always really annoying because there's always little things that don't work and you have to fix it. I'll spare you the details. But I eventually got it running in the browser, which was great. Link in the description if you want to try it. But with that, I made a game in Go pretty quickly. And I have to say the EBIT engine actually exceeded my expectations. It's definitely a small engine, and like I said, Go's not really used for game development, but I didn't really run into any problems. Like, I never had a big blocker. It came with a lot of utility I just used out of the box, and overall, I had a pleasant experience. Would I go ahead and spend years making a game with the EBIT engine? I don't think so. I don't have enough information to, like, commit to something like that, but would I use it in game jams in the future? A hundred percent. It was perfect for that. So I think it's worth a try, especially if you're interested in Go as a whole. It's a fun way to learn it. And if you like this and you want to see other ways of making games, make sure you subscribe. Plenty of other things I'm going to be checking out. And also make sure to check out this video, because YouTube thinks you're going to like it. Oh, and most important thing before I forget...